65 1031m power of transformation Prescott Arizona USA but Burnham Hams only believe it'd be kind of hard to express for anyone to express themselves in a time like this to say how much I appreciate this privilege of being here this morning and among you to minister the Lord of God which I'm sure you're acquainted with I want to thank Brother Leo and Brother Jean and all you people for this grand opportunity. And I was hearing the first hymn to the last. There's something about that singing. It's a worship that you just don't find no more. And it's always a great privilege for me when I come up here about once a year or twice to get to just fill yourself up with that goodness of them songs. And I was thinking this morning when Brother Leo announced the song of They Come From The East and West and about my wife singing that when I left to left her and Billy and Rebecca to start this great revival of a spearhead of it rather as it swept the nations and then I was thinking as I looked across this pretty clean looking bunch of ladies I remember Amida then was one of them she was a little black-headed girl and now she's like myself we are old and green, and our times are running out. And yet, with this grand hope that we'll be gathered together again in Him, where there will be no more time, old age, nothing to hinder us or bother us. I don't believe that I know any place that I have ever seen in my life, especially with this many people, where there was so many nice Christians with this love. Don't never let that die among you. Just remember, I used to have a little the saying amongst the people, my wife's name was Hope, my first wife, Billy's mother. They used to, there was three of us then. That was Hope and myself and Billy. They used to call us Hope, Faith and Charity. And so seemed to have a brotherly faith like in those days to believe that this word was true and what God had promised he would do. But, and but you see, the greatest of this is charity, is love, like Brother Leo expressed this morning, love. Where there is tongues, it shall cease. Where there is prophecies, it will fail. But when charity, which is love, it always will endure. See, dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of God be saved to see no more. Ever since by faith I saw the stream, thy flowing wounds supply. Redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. I think there's nothing greater than love, and love, if we can't express it now, we can say what that we have love. We're just saying that. But when we can really express what we have said that we have, then we show it in ourselves. Now, we are not a perfect people. We make our mistakes. We do things that's wrong. But you see, love covers all of that. We are willing, when we see our mistakes, to come back and apologize to one another. Yeah, that's warriors. That's really men and women that's gallant. Any man can go out to the battlefield <coughs> has got nerve enough to walk out there, but when he gets knocked down, then get up and try it again. See? There used to be a song that a young man and a young woman used to sing in the church, if I fall or if I feel. See? If I fall or if I, I forget how it goes. Let me rise and try again. Forgive me, Lord, and try me one more time, see. If I fall or if I sin, let me rise and try again. Just forgive me, Lord, and try me one more time. And with as many as 120 people here together, you are bound to find things sometimes enemy will sweep in among you and through your minds and start this, that. Just stop when it does it. Think back. Think of this morning. Think of the times when you are sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Some of you are plumbers, and some are carpenters, and some this, that, or the other. You rub arms with the world each day when you're out there. But when you see those things and great temptations rise, just remember these little places, sacred places where you're sitting together with the only thing that lasts. Your jobs will fail one of these days. Your health will fail. Even your life here on earth will fail. But then that won't fail. But if he is the center of all things, then let's keep our minds on the center post. What has drawn us to this? My, this clean, nice, clean looking bunch of people. I don't mean so much your clothes. Your clothes are clean, of course, and things are faces. I think these little ladies here are not a speck of lipstick on one of them. 
all of them with long hair, young and old, middle age and all, see? Yes, see? Well, you just don't realize what a treasure you got, see, in this little chapel service. I want to thank Brother and Sister Shans also for this privilege of being in their home, and this is their home now, that they have sold the property, I think, in Canada, and have come down to sojourn with us. We don't have no more earthly possessions. We are seeking a city to come whose builder and maker is God. And I thank Brother Leo and Jean for the trueness they have been to the vision that was given to them when we first met. No doubt, but what he has told you many times is strange. I didn't see it just like this. I knew there was something I heard when the young fellow came to me as a with a dream that he had had of a pyramid standing up in this pyramid and he climbed up to where I was at and I was standing out in a saucer plate or something like a light. He said, Brother Burnham, how you get up there? And I said, Brother Leo, God has to put a person in this position up here. I said, no, that you have seen return back to the people and tell them that you believe it's of God. And little knowing then that when I had a place, I love the boys and I wanted to put them in a position that where I could be with them, and they started making tips. But you see, as far as myself, they have still have still been making tips, as far as I know. But what a greater thing God has did for them than to make tips. See, most anybody can make a tip. That's got the intelligence to turn on a tape recorder or can sell. But it takes guidance of the Holy Spirit to guide a little group together like this this morning and keep them together in harmony and unity and still clinging to the message. God, may you grant these people long life here on earth, happiness and joy, and then enter into the joys of the Lord at the end of the road. We are now ready for our, our battle. The trumpet is to sound. The hymns have been sung. Now comes the word, I think, as I stand here, that you know, yes, you probably do. But to hear these comments of these young soldiers here and myself getting old and listen around and your faith and confidence and what you have placed in to believe the message that I have been given of God now, if it wasn't for you all, the message would do no good. See, it's got to be somebody to believe it. And as long as it's coming from God, there's going to be somebody to believe it. You see, God has a, made a way. He has affixed his great economy like that, that when he sends forth something, there is something there to make meet that something. The deep resounds, responds to the call of the deep. Is God to be that way? I like the word that Brother Jean used to, in prayer this morning. In this August quotes, I feel that we, when I cross that bridge down there, to come into where God has reverenced and respected and always keep it that way, no matter when the enemy... Now remember, don't forget this, Brother Leo and Jane especially. Now you think Satan is going to let this go on like this without a hindrance? Oh no, he sure won't. He's going to fly in one of these days just like a whirlwind. But when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard against it. Just keep lifting yourself up in prayer before God. Cling to one another, hold to God. For if you love one another, it shows that you love God. This will all men know that you are my disciples when you have love one for the other. And I thought a while ago, what beautiful singing, what fine voices, what a fine group of men and women, husbands and wives, young and old, and middle-aged sitting together here. I thought, well, they ought to have it down in Prescott. They ought to be down there and ought to have a little radio broadcast like that. Then, you see... That wouldn't be just exactly what God has called these young men to do, see? The bride is being called out, see? Called out now. My work is out here to call. And then things like this, and where you colonize yourself together and hold yourself where you want to bring up your children, each one watching each day like the eye of an eagle watching over their young. That, so that you won't, if you see anything wrong, then you call that person aside and pray over it and things like that. Keep it pure, holy, so the Holy Spirit can have a place to visit. God likes to be worshipped. And when you worship him, it just isn't exactly singing a song as we do, but singing it in the spirit of worship, see? Then you feel the Holy Spirit bounce back. And I see a great big young man here, 
Just think of the leader group of young fellows sitting there, young boys and their little wives sitting along here, and a big rough man sitting here, and just cry like little babies. Why? Look at today. They are out here on the street living in adultery and filth of the world and things. And to think that you can come apart and gather like this, where, as the psalm said, behold how pleasant, how sweet and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity is like the anointing oil that was on Aaron's beard that ran to the hems of his garments. Which, that anointing oil, which you know, what the anointing oil done, it reserved him to go in the presence of God. See, he had to be anointed with that oil before he went in the presence of God. And when brethren can dwell together in unity, it's likened unto that oil. We then enter into the presence of the Lord with that anointing of brethren together in unity. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. Now, can we have just out of prayer before entering into the study of the word, Heavenly Father, as our brother has expressed this morning, the entering into the august courts of the Lord. Now, Father, we realize this group of people here, and now what I say, I'll have to answer for at the day of the judgment. And this is your children. Bless them, Father, continually. Bless Brother Leo and Brother Jean. May they be led by your Holy Spirit to guide these people as we make this pilgrimage to the sunset. And then, O Holy Ghost of God, guide us to the sun. Grant it, Lord, break the bread of life to us through the word. And we are now, now we realize that we are in battle now. We are putting on pieces of armor out here on these soldiers, which they'll have to fight with in the hours that is left in life. And I pray, Lord, that you will rightly place every piece where it belongs, where they can be shielded against the enemy whenever he comes against them. Grant it, Lord, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, I'm rather slow in speaking because I'm not a trained minister. I know there is people here that smart, intelligent, intellectual, and I've laid that aside to come over now and break themselves down in humility. Great Paul the Apostle, I think of his words when he said that, I did not come to you with the enticing words of man because there you'd place your faith in that, but I come to you in the power of the Spirit. See, the great things that he knew he had. He laid aside, and I feel this morning like men here, with Brother Huey and Sister Teacher here from the mission fields, and many of you people who are really intelligent and smart, and I feel very little to stand here with no more education than I have before you. But I, and then to see that you people like that would humble yourselves to them things, lay it aside and sit down and listen to a person who hardly knows ABCs, that makes a great people out of you. It isn't he that can stick his shoulders out and walk out, and it's he that can humble himself. I think character is measured by man, not by his, the muscles on his arm or by the calluses in his hands, but the bug of knee in, in the knees of his trousers where he has prayed. I think that's what makes man. I want to read this morning some of the Bible, and I like the word, don't you? Now, we have worshipped the Lord, and we'll continue to worship Him. Now let's worship Him as a cutting, sharp-edged sword as it moves through us to find out where we're standing. And I stay, because this is one place I feel that I can teach the things that I want to say this morning. And then, of course, Brother Leo and Jean and them will exercise upon them as when we leave, and will bring the points out as I heard him so graciously mention in his message this morning that he catches that but you can't see it from a platform like this on them tapes but see just sit down and study them just keep studying them over and over it's hard to understand so many people misunderstand it and did you know little flock it is that way among us all humans it always has been if they could not understand our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even as apostles see, then how could we expect to understand it in this day? You see, he said he would say things that is straight, you know, and he wouldn't uh, explain them. He would just say them. Said, like for instance, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now what if a doctor had been standing close or a nurse or something in that congregation that day. He was talking to, well, they said, this man is a vampire, see, wants to drink his blood, see. He never explained it, he just said it. But later on, Paul came along and explained it out. 
how it was taken communion, you know, eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And so he just said those things. And finally, at last, the apostles one day, even after the resurrection, there was one was leaning upon his shoulder, John, he loved. He was a young man, and he said, What is it to you if this man tarries I come? There went out a saying among them that John wasn't going to die till Jesus returned. Jesus did not say that. He just, what? He said, what is it to you if he does tarry? And then, of course, he read in our word how that God then, that was said for a purpose. These things are all for purpose. God took that young John and lift him up in the spirit and so his coming plumb over into the age that is to come, see, said, what is it to you if it tarries? He didn't tarry him, physical, but the word that he spoke through him, it brought us to this age where we are now, you see. So it all works together for the good. In Romans, a very familiar chapter, I want to take a few verses here, and about the first two or three verses, two verses, I think it is and read, and in this, try to explain it the best that I know how by the help of the Holy Spirit. Romans, the 12th chapter, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. I thought that was so beautiful for this group this morning. And what you done, did, and now, and is a conjunction, as I understand, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what we all want to do, is not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind to do the perfect and acceptable will of God. Now, that we have been saved as we are, and that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit as we have now, we want the mind that was in Christ to be in us, that we might be transformed from the natural things of life and be brought in to do the perfect will of God by transformation of God's Spirit by His Word. Now, my subject is the power of transformation. I may leave my Bible here now. It used to be years ago. <coughs> When I was a young man, like this man, I didn't have to set down my scriptures and things when I was studying. But now, since I'm getting old, why I carry a little book, and when I get something, why I just jot it down, have to put it on the scripture, and used to, I just had that line of scriptures right in my mind. I just come right down. But dear friends, I'm not young like you all this morning. But I'm old and I have been through many hard battles, see? And by going through those hard battles brings you where you are this morning, see? So I'm not sure you understand that. God has put me through it that my life might open up a way to see this is it, see? Then you all run over that road. But before me, there was someone opened the way for me to go, see? And we see and we open the road, up the road, one for the other, as we see sometime an old veteran getting old, and his marks all over him, as Paul said one time, I bear in my body the marks of Jesus Christ, you see. How Timothy looked upon those marks, I guess, with reverence, as he committed to young Timothy. Now, transforming, I used to work in a public service company where we had transformers, and to transform, now the word is, the word means in itself something like to transform, means something that's been changed, something that's changed from one thing to another. And I want to speak for the next 45 minutes or an hour on the transforming. I'd like to use this text and I may say some things in here that seems very strange. And as Brother Leo has just said, take it and just study over it a little while, see. Just uh, think of it for a little bit. To be transformed is to be changed and made something different, like a tadpole. It's transformed from a tadpole to a frog, see. Once he looked like a catfish, he swims around, he's got a head with his tail, and everything looks like a catfish. Then after a while, he begins to lose. He loses the tail, and he's transformed from one species to another. I think that's what Paul must have had in mind when he said to be transformed by the renewing. Let's see. 
let me get that right and not be not confirmed you know what confirmed is be not conformed to this world but he transformed by the renewing of your mind renewing of your mind the things that you once thought upon to be treasures lay that aside and be transformed to something else what you once was one time to what you are now see by the renewing of your mind that you might prove that a good and acceptable and perfect will of god oh that's what we all want to know how to do it see we are here we love him he saved us that we want to know what to do and we're trying to take a little step this morning to raise up just a little bit higher sometimes you have to hit things that you just hold on for a few till we see what it comes out to be now in genesis the first chapter the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters we realize that the water and the bible said in the beginning back there that this the world was without form and was void there was nothing but just a darkness of chaos and what a terrible horrible ship he must have been been in nothing but way into the darkness yonder without light or anything and the churning of the water and that wandering star twisted around and around the orbit out there somewhere it must have been a terrific mass of something lost like it was couldn't find its way and that's what we become when we become wandering stars away from god just without hope without god without just churning around out in darkness not knowing when where we're going and god took that great chaos of darkness and transformed it into a garden of eden see by his word that's how we're transformed by god's word when god said let there be light and that mass of creation out there come over in around the sun and begin to revolve around the sun and became a gun of eden because it obeyed the word of god it done the perfect will of god for it was transformed from chaos into a gun of eden by the word of god now that's what we are here for that's my message has been all along is a word of god we must hold to that regardless of what other things takes place always stay with that word always check out your motives and objectives if it is according to the word of god if it isn't leave it alone see but if it's with the word of god and lines up with the word of god then that you hold to that now god sometimes just like your little group here this morning he lets it not happen just overnight he lets god we're the one that gets in a hurry god is never in a hurry he just says it and that is going to be for when he says anything is going to be is just going to be he lets it take its time he let the hebrew children the famous characters of the scriptures that were standing on god's what to be true they said our god is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace nevertheless see we won't bow to the image because it's against the word see although as if he slays us we he will rise us up again you see see and they he let them walk right up to the edge of the great furnace and drop into it before it seemed like he even paid any attention like he wasn't even watching them but he is always watching though he's always watching for this now god said let there be light and six thousand years it took this eden to come into existence and we are taught in the scripture for one day upon the earth is or is as a thousand years with god and a thousand years upon the earth is one day with god so it took six thousand years to make this earth and to bring it into an eden but you see it was god the great master of all intelligence and he had in his mind what he wanted to do just like when the man that built this trailer when the man that when you brethren here that we designed this park how you would make it it was in your mind and kept working that vision out that's the way god did about the world he worked it was in his mind and if you notice it come like by evolution like he was learning more the time making something greater and greater but see he was above it all and just let it evolve up to that you see everything he began to bring upon the earth from botany life and fish and so forth it come on 
into birds and the animals and then something in his own image a man and stopped there see because it was up to his perfection of what he wanted and that's the way you start like this trailer you might lay the frame down and you say what are you doing like you when you all moved the first rocks away from this corner here what are you doing see it didn't look like it would be like it is now it looks like a little hidden because it was your mind what to do and you just kept working out now we want to be transformed ourselves by the renewing of our mind see not what we have on this earth what we are going to look for on this earth but what we are coming to in the world that is to come transformed by renewing of mind now six thousand years got taken to make this and we see in genesis 1 yet now we see that in in this god had an objective that he wanted to bring to pass and so many people teaching on genesis back there in the first chapter and second chapter and third chapter especially it looks like that god repeats himself or he said he went ahead and said all these things that he did oh how he let there be light and there will be this and let there come forth and there wasn't even one thing yet was there nothing there wasn't a light that old world was still floating out there in the darkness covered over with water but see he had spoke his word and then that's when he was speaking now we notice here in Genesis 1 he said and he formed man in his own image in his own likeness in the image of God he made he him male and female see he was making man he just spoke the word then we find out after his many days had passed maybe hundreds and hundreds of years there was still no man to till the soil nobody should till the soil so then God formed man out of the dust of the earth see he had spoke the word and then the world had to take place now when he said let there be light maybe there might have been hundreds of years maybe 800 years before there ever was a light but it comes to pass because god said so and god is going to have a church i don't care how many dark ages we go through and whatever more he is going to have a church without a spot or wrinkle whether we are part of it or not because he has already said it was going to happen it's going to be there and he commanded to transform it into the plant life and every life that he put forth he said these words like let there be a palm tree let there be an oak tree let there be a fir look down in the desert where we live down here in tucson out on there there's cactus jumping cactus all kind of cactuses just 30 minutes from here there is Sherman pain up on top of the mountain now these cactus will not grow up there and neither will that Sherman pine grow down here now where was the intelligence that planted the seed see they had to come from somewhere it was God's word let there be and it was now we find out that all this after he had made it transforming it into its kind and its life and it was all put in by the word of God the Creator it all we find out that this all headed up in a headquarters called the garden of eden and god put his son and his son's bride over it all see this great creation see he had a reason for it he made everything so pretty he made the flowers and the life and the birds and there was no death no sin no sorrow no sickness and then all this great thing headed up into one big headquarters which was the garden of eden and there he put his son adam and Adam's bride, wife. Now, you might say it was his wife. Potentially, it was his wife. But he had never, never really been his wife yet. Like in the scripture, we find out that it said, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. See, now it was his wife, which when he made the promise to marry her or to have her, but yet it wasn't his wife yet because he had never knew her as a wife so that's the way it was here the reason i said god's son and his bride adam had never knew his wife as a wife but yet it was his wife potentially 
just like the church now and Christ. Now, then all could rest because all of God's good word seeds that he had spoke had brought forth of its kind. The earth come over, there was light, there was sunshine, when he let the sun shine. Now, why did he make the sun shine? He had in his mind, see, that if the sun don't shine, the flower won't grow. And that he speak into existence. He makes everything to meet its purpose. Whatever it is, like a tree, it bears a certain acorn or it bears an apple. He makes the fruit of the garden and so forth. It's all for its purpose. And everything had to come to pass and he had spoke it. Now, the only thing he had to do after spoken it, he speaking it rather, he could go to rest because it he had spoke it and it was all has to come to pass because he had spoke it. I don't know how much it had to go through before it come to pass. How many rejects and whatever more. But it had to come to pass because he said it would come to pass. He had spoke it. The same thing it is about having a church here. In the last days, he's going to have a bride. He is able of these stones to raise children to Abraham. If we don't follow him, he'll get somebody else that will follow him. See, he's going to have it because he has already spoke it. Whatever he says, it has to be that way. It cannot change. It must come forth that way because he said it would. And all this great thing that he knowed would come to pass. After he had spoke it, he could take a rest. Everything under control. His seed was his word. And his word is a seed. Jesus said it was. And everything would be all right because he had said for it to bring forth of its kind, transforming only to his kind. See? His word had to be its, uh, of its kind. If he said a palm tree, he didn't mean a palm and an oak mixed together. He meant a palm tree here and an oak tree here. Everything positionally in its place. Oh, if we could only learn that, that what part of the world we are, we must take our place, no matter what it is. I think of a little sister here in Wiltshire. Sometime, how many faithful prayers has we made over it? Then we don't understand, so we just commit it to God. And with, she is a flower here among you, with her pleasantness and everything, see, that we can get up and go around how she would long to do that. But yet, she is pleasant just the way she sits. I always get inspired to watch this lady, see, because she will believe in healing. We have seen God do miracles far beyond that, see, and she knows that too, see, but she's willing to take her place, see, whatever it is, that's what we want. And I believe it was David said, I would rather be a doormat at the house of the Lord than to be dwell in the tents with the wicked, you see, no matter what it is, take my place. Sometimes you have to separate from everything that's dear on earth to you to take a position that God has called you to. I'm sure you can read between the lines what I'm saying. See, sometimes the very dearest person on earth, you have to shake hands with them and take a position in Christ to where God has called you, see. But what is God doing? Transforming you from what you was, maybe a daughter or a son or whatever it is, from a lovely family sometimes it places you somewhere else because it's his way of doing it, see, by renewing of your mind. To obey the word of God regardless of what the price is, see, these things don't come. He didn't call. Our redemption wasn't a cheap thing. It was a son of God has to die for us, see. It isn't. Things of value come of great price. To bring this message, it wasn't easy, see. No, it isn't. I had to forsake everything that was dear to me, even my own people, everybody. But you see the value of it is, you see, is to do the will of God. And to do that, which knowing that there is something in me, when they used to say, well, they was going to put me away, I thought I lost my mind, baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, contrary to the church. And all these things, they said he's crazy. But you see, no matter what they said, there is something 
has to be done. And God just takes a person, stick him in his hands and say, do this, and you do it. Yeah. How a praise it must have been to St. Paul, taught under Gamaliel, the greatest teacher of the day, and to come down and the very thing that he considered heresy, the things that he thought was the worst things that could have happened to the church, he comes right around and becomes a partaker of it. A strange thing and how God works in wondrous ways, in strange odd ways his wonders perform. When God had spoke it, he knew his word was a seed, and it could, it would bring forth of its kind. Now, it was commanded to bring forth only of its kind, and it will always do that if man don't tamper with it. And so would God's church and everything else bring forth of the kind like it was at the first. If theologians didn't tamper with that word, trying to put it somewhere else or something else, God has spoke it, and no matter how much they can, they try to contaminate it and tamper it and so forth, it's going to bring forth of its kind. There's nothing to stop it, I hope. I don't sound like I'm yelling at you all. But the Panama just the microphone. Is that too loud? The conscience says no. And see, now we find everything in order. God spoke it and he said, let there be. Let there be. And let there be an Eden. Let there be beautiful flowers. Let there be my son in my own image. Stand over there in the garden of Eden, and let his bride stand by his side. Oh, how beautiful what that was. And the father, he was a father, you see. So there come his own children coming forth, and he made a paradise for them. God loves to do things for his children. Don't you remember how you mothers and how, no matter how, if you had to allowance the table, if Junior needed a pair of shoes that he liked, you would do it, see? whatever it was, to do something for your children. Dad, how you'd work a little harder to get something for the children, see? Well, that just shows that we are way down here, a parent. He is an extreme parent, see? And how much more? No wonder the apostle said, I has not seen or ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God has for them in store that love him. We just can't conceive in our own mind. We, our mind isn't eligible of thinking the right directions, what God has for store in us that love him. See, we, I can imagine what it will be. I can think what it will be, but I, my mind is not capable of thinking how great it is. It's beyond that. Could you imagine that heaven, what heaven will be when we'll all be there? and young and no sin and oh what a beautiful place but see it's beyond that see it can't even enter the heart of man what god has for them in stone he spoke it and it's going to be so now after all this beautiful layout that he had there of his i don't mean to say it in that word layout but kind of like don't the mother before the coming of the child don't they call that Liet, they get all the little booties and everything ready, you know, just for the arriving of this little portion of love that God is sending, getting that. That's what God did for Adam and Eve. He created this garden of Eden. He had spoke it, it was in his mind. And when he says it, then it has to happen. Bear that on mind now. What he says, it must happen. See, and he can't, nothing can hinder it. Nothing can keep it from happening. There is nothing can keep it from happening. God said so. That settles it. God said it is going to happen. Now, he had all this in mind, and he said, let there be now. That's Genesis 1. See? Let there be this. Let there be that. Let there be. He was sowing seed. Let it be here. Let it be here. Let it be here. And he knew it was going to be that way because it cannot change. Now, that gives us faith then. And what he said here is going to be. So let's let that seed fall into our hearts and we might be the bedding grounds of that, see, into our hearts. And let us act of this place that he has placed us in in the last days, see. Let the seed fall in our hearts, Lord. Let the word fall in my heart. Let there not be any unbelief. Like Abraham, when he was an old man, looked like impossible. How are they going to do that? 
how is he going to be this way? He never considered that. He just received the word of God and went on believing it. And God brought it to pass. Now, God had said all these things so he knew it would be. And it did. He brought forth of its kind. Now, that he had transformed then all the seed into the living creature and creation than it was supposed to be. It came up just as he said it would. Or he said, let it be maybe hundreds and hundreds of years past, but here we find this a beautiful God, Eden, and the big birds are flying. Them birds didn't have to die. And the wolf and the lamb were feeding together, and the lion, the leopard, and the ox, and there was no killing, no death, no sorrow. And there was Adam and Eve walking in the garden of Eden. Every seed bringing forth, it never could do anything, nothing less. It never could do nothing else. Because God said, let it be that way. It had to be that way. Oh, how I would like to stop here just a minute to see, see, there is where we are facing. Yet the completion of that word, for God said, let there be and here it come up. First, perfectly, just exactly. Now this tree can only bring forth that tree. This tree can only bring forth this tree. And Adam, a son of God, can only bring forth a son of God. See, you get what I mean? It's everything of its kind. And so God could say, well, I'll just rest now. And did you notice it was very few words that God ever spoke actually from that time on. He committed it after the fall to his prophets. And they bring forth the word now, you see. God rested. He didn't have no more to do. He just go to his headquarters and knock on the door and say, Father, what is it? And he sends the word down by them. See, he has a system and the way of doing those things. Let it be just and that's the way it was. Everything of its seed bringing forth of its kind. Now, when everything looked so pretty and everything coming to pass just to what God had said, now, here comes that slimy, dirty deceiver. Now, that's what I'm trying to warn you all here about. When you see God's seed begin to take hold, to grow, watch out for that fellow coming in just as slick as it can be. Quote scripture just to hold and have it. See, watch him. Because he's going to be a deceiver. He is a deceiver. Now, I'm going to call it instead of a conformer being conformed, he is a deformer. Deforming the things that's been conformed, he is a deformer. And he, a deformer or perverter or a corrupter of the original seed and the original program. Now you see here, like in your little group here this morning, you got a program, you got a vision. Now watch for that corrupter. Oh, he'll be sly and slick as he can be. You see, but keep your vision, boy. See, keep holding to that. Now, we also find out that when he came in, he deformed that seed. And he corrupted that seed by getting into the bedding grounds, which was Eve, and corrupting that seed with a corruptible seed before it could get there to corrupt that beautiful garden of Eden. Where heaven, the only thing that is, is just a restoration. Where we are now, we are on our road back to the original beginning of the creation of God. Back to the garden of Eden again husband and wife without any sin or anything to live eternally but to that one now he wants us to transform our minds by the renewing or transformed be transformed by the renewing of our minds now satan comes in and puts in a deforming to the word making it say something that it isn't now that's what he did in the beginning and now notice this is going to sound awful strange this morning to people if I don't wait and base too much thought here before I get to my regular thought I wanted to get to you is this that the deformer came in and as God had took 6,000 years with the original word to bring forth every word of its kind and everything that he made would be God's own word bringing forth of its kind now the deformer has took 6,000 years and to deform that word of God and what has he done? He has brought himself to a new type of Eden. 
Satan's hidden. That's where we're living today. How did he do that? How could it happen now? The striking part is how he did it. And that's where we have to. What I'm here for, to lay this down before you so that you can study of it now. And with the brothers here and so forth in the weeks to come, that you can see how Satan did this and watch how cunning he is and how sly he is. Now, he deformed those seeds. Now, he could not destroy them. He just deformed them. Now, we realize that sin is righteousness perverted. It's just that a lie is a truth misrepresented. See, anything, an adultery is a right act that God ordained. Just took in the wrong way. See, anything and death is a perversion of life. Death just sticks. See, deforms life. Now, he had 6,000 years to do it with his poison spray. And how did he do it? Now, this is a striking part. And listen close now. He did it by civilization. Now, that sounds strange, but that's what. I'm going to make a statement here that will keep you guessing maybe for a few minutes. I hope not. Do you realize this? Now, I'm not trying to support ignorance, but did you know that civilization, science, education, and the things that we cherish so great today is a very instrument of Satan, even civilization. Civilization never come by God. Civilization come by Satan. Now, I'll prove that to you by the word just in a few minutes. Civilization is not of God. For, let me show you. In this civilization, the more civilized we get as we work through science, we are always killing ourselves. See? And this civilization has built up to its pinnacle now, and we got death in this civilization. We got sin in this civilization. We got sickness in this civilization. That can't be of God. So God, in the mill, his great own great kingdom that is to come, we have we have a civilization that it not be anything like this. It won't be by science. It will be by a faith civilization, by the word thing. And this scientific civilization we have is exactly Satan's trap, and that's what he has killed the people with. And that's what he is killing us every day with. That's how, as we eat each day, living, instead of living, we die. They have so perverted everything to even take just so much of this and mix it with this and hybrid this and that and that till it's dying. It's a dying race. And no matter what you try to do, you die. You see the picture, that picture last night of those Africans. You know why? They never had penicillin. Then people live longer than we do. They don't even know the germs. Don't bother them. See why? A germ would throw up his hand and surrender to them. See? Because he, see? He don't. They don't. Why? They haven't all been seen. We'll take science to figure out like a penicillin or something they'll place in us to take this disease out and it tears down something else and makes a bedding ground for something else. Now, see? Now, he don't do that, see? Now, any, many of you people come from farms, anyone knows that a good healthy plant never needs to be sprayed. It's got a repellent on it itself of life that a germ won't even get on it. On a real, on a real healthy plant, it's this hotbed plant. It's this hybrid plant you have to pay me. For instance, some of you fellows here are Westerners here. Look back in the time of the old longhorn cow. Today you say you got a better beef with your Hereford, have you? You haven't. That longhorn cow, not taken up for the old girl, but she could. She would winter out here like a deer. Oh, she was skinny and everything, but she was twice. This hair for you pull hay under him when you take his picture up to his thumb nearly to show that he's beef to the hawk. And what is it? You turn him loose out there, he would die. He couldn't winter it if he had to. You have to feed him and everything else to take care of him. Baby me around. He's a hybrid, see, but a real, genuine old longhorn just turn him loose. That's the way today with our Christians. We got so many, we have to soft, soft soap them to bring, to beg them, put them, make him a dick on the church, put them on the shoulder, and make him some great position in the church. Or if you don't, why he, he won't come in. If you don't, let this one do this and this one do that. It's a baby. Could you imagine genuine Christians being that? They were rugged, they were burly. Could you imagine St. Paul? 
being the type of a Christian, could you imagine St. Peter being, now, if you don't make me an overseer, well, I don't know. I might go join so-and-so. They were ragged men. They were men of faith. They lived with God. They walked with God. They were men of few words. They served God day and night constantly. You didn't have to spray them and baby them and offer them this, that, or the other. They were man, rugged. They were genuine seeds, no hybrid in denominations. If you, the Methodists, don't treat me right, I'll go to the Baptists. The Baptists don't treat me right, I'll go to the Pentecostals. If they don't treat me right, I'll go back to the Catholics or whatever more. See, they, it's a hybrid, have to keep them spread. Yes, Dr. Reverend, brother so and so, that ain't Christianity. Christianity asks no titles, it asks no favors, it only knows God, its original seed, it loves God and loves one another. There is no spring on them and babying them and patting them around and saying, Yes, well, this sister, well, I believe it's all right for her to have short hair and this one not, and there is no such stuff as that. And let them get by with this. It's a rugged, it's a gospel. Lay it out there. Let it fall where it will. Christians love it. Must I go be carried home to heaven on a flowery bed of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bad disease? Must I be put on the back and this, that, and the other? And baby, I expect my place out yonder with the rugged. I expect not to come up there with no trophy scars at all. I must fight here, I must reign, increase my courage, Lord, sing. Let me stand like a Christian. Now, to be a hybrid plant, how to be bedded and petted and brought into something, you're not brought in anyhow Christianity, you're born in it. You become a new creature, you're a seed of God that comes into the earth. Now, we find out that he sprayed this poison spray, and that spray was a spray of modern understanding, education, science, and civilization, the very things that we cherish so much. Did you ever stop to think that our great enemy in the natural life today among the nations is communism? What is the god of communism, civilization, and science, um, and education, science? That's right, isn't it? That's what they live on and thrive on is science, scientific sciences, a god of science. Now, if you will just end with the poison spray of this modern civilization, science and education, now let me prove to you that education and civilization come from the devil. Now, let us stand back here and see. If you want to, in Genesis, the fourth chapter, all right, now let's begin with the 16th verse of Genesis 4, 14 here. Genesis 4, pardon me. Now notice Satan. You people follow the steps with their brother here. Now, you've heard me preach on the serpent seed, and that cannot be denied. That was opened up in one of the seven seals. It was hid. Now, if children has come up under that kind, see, under that kind of teaching, that's what their parents was. They have the nature of their parents, their denominations, and so forth. They have to believe that, see. They believe that because you're born under that parent. But today... We're not born under the parent, a parent is the word, and the word, well, see, I was born under two for that age, but this is the climax age. This is the age beyond those denominations. There had to come forth, must come forth, God ordained it so, that there must come forth, them seven seals must be opened. It was supposed to be done in this Laodicean age, and I think beyond any shadow of doubt, not as we brag, we have no brag only on Jesus Christ, none of us. We only brag on Jesus Christ. But we are thankful with them for the privilege of knowing by any, beyond any shadow of doubt, God has chosen us in these last days and has proven it by the signs in the heaven and in the earth. And every one of them coming right straight back to the world to prove that it's so. This age that we live in, the message and how it is, we are not a cult, we are not a bunch of fanatics, we are servants of God that has been called by the Holy Ghost. You all have all kinds of names stuck to you, but that don't mean it's so. Now remember, Satan, son was king. Now I think you all been through all the tips, which I see your library is out here, of them. Now remember that Eve became pregnant by Satan. 
And in the same day, we got a case of it in Tuso now. That a woman, if she becomes, she lives with two men, she can have two different type of children. We know that. I know it in the breeding of dogs and things and so forth, if it's the right away. So Satan that morning perhaps met this evil one, which was a serpent, not in reptile, but a beast. Most subtle, cunning, smart of all the beasts, just under man. And man is beast himself. And we are mammal, wrong blooded animals. And Satan was next day here. This serpent was the next thing to man, a chimpanzee. Stand between man and the chimpanzee. Now, science is looking for that missing link. And it's so hid by taking him down, and not even a bone in him looks like a man, see, making him a reptile. Now, we find now that this fellow found Eve in the Garden of Eden, this young woman that knowed no sin, knowed not what her nakedness was, and he knew he was smart, subtle, wise, and he told her the seed, the fruit was pleasant, and it was desirable. And when he lived with her that morning, and then, see, then the afternoon she persuaded Adam to do the same thing, telling him what it was. And then Adam, deliberately, knowing he ought not to have done it, walked out with his wife and did this act, which finally he would have come to it anyhow. But see, it had to be that way. The wisdom of God caused this then, that displays his attribute to be a savior. Father, Hila, you have heard me preach on that, see? Now, if that hadn't have been done, he just let them out there on free moral agency to let them act. He couldn't make them do it and then still be just. But he could put it, them equal with him and free moral agency and then let them do it themselves. And he knew they would do it. And so then, you see, then when Adam lived with, she brought forth twins, and one of them was Satan, and one of them was of Adam, which was of God, Cain, and Abel. Now, and that happens. We got a case there in Tuso now. The white woman lived with her husband one morning, and that afternoon she lived with a Negro. And one of the little boys, those two little boys, was born. One of them was a little kinky-headed Negro, and the other was a blonde-headed kid, really pretty. And now, think now, she's trying to make the white father take care of both children. And he said, I'll take care of my own, but not his. Let the Negro man take care of his own child. So you see, it's true. There is always twins, and that's the reason, don't forget this little flock, the church in the last days is going to be twins so close that it will deceive the elected. Matthew 24, 24, see, the church is going to, it's a Pentecostal move. It's so much like the real thing till it will deceive the very elected if it was possible. And a little later on, if I get the chance, I want to explain what, how that election comes. Now, see, it's going to deceive them because it's almost like the same thing, see, just two fathers, that's all. Same mother, same church, same movement, same thing. The bedding ground is the same where the word falls, but one of them, like here, is perverted. You understand? Say amen. If you don't, Christian says amen. See? One of them is a perversion because it's a wrong father, which I will prove someday if God will let me. And that domination is a mark of the beast. See? It's the wrong father. He is stirring people for an organization instead of the word. See? It's a wrong father. It's a cane move. When I go home this time, I'm preaching on the subject, the trail of the serpent. The beast at the beginning and the beast at the end, and they trail him right through the Bible and show how he heads up, see? And you all get that on the telephone, you see? If the Lord permits us to do it. And now, just watch how cunning that fellow is. How he's just exactly just, well, they are just like Judas and Jesus, they are both brothers in their tribe, just like Esau and Jacob, and the like, the crow and the dove sitting on the same roost, and everything is a twin. In this great warfare that we are in, the enemy uses deception, like he did to Eve. Oh, God has said surely, but surely, see, see, trying to reason it beyond what God said originally, thou shalt die. He said, yes, God said that, but surely, see that, spray over it, see, but what God says, God keeps. He don't need 
any help from Satan. He keeps it. So don't never be deceived by that. Now we notice then that it brought forth of its kind. Now in Genesis here we find out after the spring of this poison of knowledge, now Satan, now science is knowledge, and we all hear, all we hear is science, 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 science. The great subject in school science. Today, a better automobile, a better this, a better home, a better house, a better this, a better that. What are we doing? Dying all the time. Created an automobile. We quit walking, quit walking. We will turn to blubber. Well, we don't have money anymore. We have jellyfish, that's right. And the woman, all she does, threw the clothes and then with the random taps something, press a button. There it is, when your mom used to walk to the spring and pack water and chop wood and boil over a kettle somewhere and fix her clothes like that, and we are so soft. If they do it, it would kill us, but we can't help it. This is the age we're living in. Even science says now that little girls are coming into menopause, young women between 20 and 25 years old. I meet them right in the line. That young men go through the middle age between 20 and 25 years old. My mother, my wife went through about 30 to 40. My mother went through from 45 to 50. See how they're degenerating in these last days because why we are working more on science. 150 years ago, the only travel a man had was by horse or by foot. And now he goes by jet, almost by a thought, see? Science has done it, and that's of the devil. Now you see, that's right, Brother Brandon, yes sir. Let's take to Genesis now. 4. Cain went out in the presence of the Lord. Now watch, the first thing he done... You tell me when you think you got enough here, because I'll just stop on this anywhere. See, Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. There he made his mistake, and there is where you will make a mistake. And there is where it will make the mistake. The very minute you walk out of the presence of God, Cain went from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. See how religious it was, went around to the east side, east side, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and Enoch built a city, see civilization, he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch, and Enoch was born Arad, and Arad be, uh, took unto him two wives, the name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. And Ada bore Jabal, and the father of such dwelt in tents, and of such that was has cattle. And his brother's name was Jabal, I guess J U B A L. He was a father such as handled the harps and organs, see, music, science, see, coming in. And Zilla also bay Tubakin, an instructor of every A R T I F I C A R of brass and iron. In other words, kind of molding, putting it together. And the sister of Tobal, Cain, was Nama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my vo voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my heart. If Cain shall be avenged seven times, truly Lamech, seventy, seven folds of seven fold. Now notice, as soon as they went out from the presence of the Lord, they started building cities, they started making instruments, they started in science, to making brass and iron and playing music and so forth, see, see? Now, where did it come from? Who went out? Cain? They sat and see, do you understand it? Cain went out. And notice he went out from the presence of the Lord and started working in science. Now look where he is still working, see? Science, education, cities, culture. It's of the devil. Who started it? The devil. Who is it of today? The devil. Atomic bombs and things to destroy us with. We live in it. We have to live here. We are a being. We have to stay here. But God's great civilization won't have any of that in it, see? And science is taking the natural things and perverting it to do things that it wasn't intended to do. And so is scientific religion. It takes the word of God and makes a church organization out of it. Instead of doing the things that it's supposed to do, they say the days of miracles is past. The Bible said he is a symmetry to end forever. There is no such a thing as divine healing. Go into other world and preach the gospel. 
to every creature the signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. If they take up serpents or drink deadly things, it won't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. What? Then all nations, everybody, every creature, lo, I am with you, even to the end of the earth. Ends of the world, cosmos, the whole thing, end of the consummation. He is absolutely there. And now see, they take science and say, oh well, as long as we gather together and join church and uh, become this or good street member, we pay our. See, it's not saying, oh, there is no such a thing as God. You heard my tape on the false Christ in the last days. See, not the false Jesus. Satan knowed better than that, see, but it's false Christ. Christ means anointed one. And they are actually anointed, anointed with, with what? The Holy Spirit to do signs and wonders, and they do it. But see, when it comes down now, we're in the last age, not back in the Pentecostal age there, we are over here in the last age, and the first age begin with the word, which is Christ, and the last age has to end with the word, which is Christ. And these are the things, these shucks and so forth, as I have explained, is just carriers of the word to serve its purpose until it comes into the full stature, see, of what the original grain was. Now, the 25th of us. And Adam knew his wife uh, again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said that she has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And Seth, and to Seth, to him also, there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. And then men begin to call on the name of the Lord. See how that serpent seed went off into science, education, cities and music and great things, and education and science and so forth. But the seed of the righteous one, who it was, see, Eve didn't have a seed. You know that. The woman doesn't have a seed. The female, she has an egg, but not a seed. But she appointed him a seed, see, appointed by God's appointment. She took the seed, and the great seed course from the woman was that God gave, see, God appointed her a seed instead of the one that Cain slew, that the enemy death serpent seed slew God's seed in perversion there. You see, God appointed through the woman a seed, which is Christ, see, to bring back the original seed again. You see it? And so you see the perversion brought death through education and intelligence and what we call today science and religion and so forth it brought death but she appointed him a seed and then man began to call upon the name of the lord and begin to come back to the word again sing and remember follow that seed as we will track it in a few weeks on this serpent now you follow that it switches right through the scripture watch it them two vines grow right together as you've heard my message on the vine they come right up together and so close together that it would almost deceive the reelected if possible in the last days when it come to the head it puts forth a grain just like a wheat but it isn't a wheat see it isn't it's a shark yet now see there civilization education I think I've got about 10 more scriptures, you see, wrote down there. But I think it's not to go through that, but we understand by this that education, science, and civilization is of the devil. That's right. It isn't of God. It is of the devil. Now, I don't say you shouldn't have it. No, certainly not. A little later on, I can, will prove that, that God, just like you, wearing clothes, you women, as men, we wasn't supposed to wear clothes in the beginning, but see, being that we live in these ages, we do, we must wear clothes. See, it's appointed to us to do that. We must wear them, but in the beginning, we didn't have to, see, because we knew no sin. But now we have to. Now we have to have automobiles. Now we must go to places and visit and so forth in automobiles and science and so forth, but it isn't of God. It is not of God educations, but there are God's form of civil um, education, civilization, science is in its original condition. See, 
it goes beyond this what we are doing now look they take that certain things and put certain things together and it makes a chemical that will destroy now leave them in their right position they are right put them together they are all wrong see it brings death and when you try to take the word of God and put it in religion of this world, you bring death to yourself. It kills the subject. See what I mean? It kills the person. You say, well, now look, you believe in God. Oh, now you don't have to believe that. If you are a church, right, then that that's the boom that kills the subject. You've got to let everything fall aside and take the word only. Stay right with that word. Don't leave. When God said so, that's just what it is, I don't care what education can prove. In the days of Noah, they could prove that there was no water up there in the skies. But God said there was coming down some end it come. That's right. They say today there is no fire up there to fall. But what it fall one day? Aha. Uh -huh. How are we going to do this and do that? Watch God do it. He will. He said it would do it. And that seed will take a hole somewhere. Glory to God. The only thing he is looking for today is a bedding ground somewhere that it can bed. I'll immediately I'll start in somebody and I'll pervert it and spray it like he did Eve. He started in Eve for her to bed forth and bring forth sons of God, not sons of Satan, but she was a bedding ground and it fell in the wrong place. So will the word fall in an unbeliever or a doubter or a skeptic. It will make a church member out of them, but never a son or daughter of God. You tell them to let their hair grow, they laugh in your face. You tell them to do this and that, or the man to do it, they laugh in your face. It's not sons of God. It's the wrong bedding ground. Yet they are holding the seed, see? They anoint the false anointed ones. They are anointed, yes, with the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues and do signs and wonders, but it's of Satan. Jesus said, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have no I cast out devils and worked great mighty works and wonders in your name. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. What is iniquity? David said, if I conceive iniquity in my heart, God not hear me, see. Iniquity is something that you know that you ought to do and you won't do it. You know better, but won't do it. It's iniquity, see? You know they should stay with the Lord of God. But for the church sake or somebody else's sake or something else, you'll stray from the Word of God and do what the organization says. Well, I don't know. My church says we should do it this way. And I believe it this way, see? And it's right before that before you that you shouldn't do it that's iniquity depart from me you that work iniquity look at the great saint paul in first corinthians 13 he said though i speak with tongue of men and angels now you that want or somebody want to lay unto that's the evidence of the holy ghost paul said though i speak with tongues like men and angels and i'm a charity like you all have here among you i am nothing saying you can speak with tongues yes because it's a preacher it's a word. A preacher can take this word and go forth and preach it and say that word, and that word will grow. But the preacher could be a hypocrite himself. It's the word, see, but the true living preacher of God takes all of the purpose, the word, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out. And you add something else with that, you go a perverted plant. If I start out here with a wheat, and put a cockle bar with it and would interbreed them together if it could be done so by the pollen and put it there i got a wheat cockle bar thing it looks like a wheat and yet it's a cockle bar it ain't genuine life it can't reproduce itself again see it'll come forth but it can't reproduce itself a donkey can breed to a mere horse and shall bring forth a mule, but a mule can't breed back to a mule. It's a hybrid that every word brings forth of its kind. See, it can breed once, and the church can come as an organization once, but it can't rebuild itself. It brings out another organization. Lutheran can't breed out 
to the Lutheran, it brought out a Methodist. And a Methodist brought out a Pentecostal. See, it can't breed back because it's dead. It can't start a revival. Where did God ever start a revival in an organization? Look over history. He never did. It's the organization that forms behind the revival. When Luther, the man of God, came forth with a message of justification, behind him came the Lutheran church. They could never could build up. Then God sent a man by the name of John Wesley. There came a revival behind that. What did they do organized. It never could bring itself again. See, it's thorough. Hallelujah. But the word of God shall endure ever endure. That's right. It will bring forth its kind. Here come a Pentecostal along. He can't look what it's done organized. It can't rebreed itself. They can have all robots and everything else all over the country. It cannot do it. It will hang right back to that old natural seed of the mural. It cannot. No matter how many injections it has, it's still how many of the spiritual affairs it has and whatever it has, it's, you know, now you are adults. You know what I'm talking about. No matter how many husband and wives it has, and whatever more, and how many little sisters it builds up out here, and little churches and organizations, it cannot be a revival. It's finished. It crossed up to the world from the word of God, and it cannot reproduce life again. God will raise up some other something and start his word moving on, and if it organizes, it will die too. That's right, it cannot reproduce itself because it's a hybrid. That's correctly. Look at your hybrid corn today. They say that's the best corn. It's a killer. It's what's killing you. Your lives wasn't made for your bodies. Wasn't made for that. Your bodies was made for the original grain. That's the reason your fathers and mothers and so forth lived longer. And that's the reason they were tough. Man, 70 and 80 years old was rough and tough. See, they lived on the natural things. Watch this old mountain. Men out here live on deer and the original grains. Put a man in here in the city. Here, he comes along, a big slope at about 35, 40 years old, soft. Certainly. Well, I get off the subject, don't I? Notice, but I'm trying to get it over to you. What That's civilization. What we call culture. Culture, you hear so much about that. Now, did you ever hear what my estimation of culture was? It's a man that ain't got nerve enough to kill a rabbit, but can eat a belly full of it after somebody else kills it. So, I that's what I think of culture, you see. That's right, see. We don't. God don't come by. It isn't a culture. A man into God. You don't civilize him into God. He's born a seed of God. From God always was God and never be some nothing else but God. You're not cultured into it. Now, how he has his kind of Eden and by deformed seed, Satan has made his great even, his great Eden now. What is it? Culture, science, beautiful churches, high steeples, fine polished preachers, education, DAD, PhD, LLD, Doctor of Literature, Doctor of Divinity, Doctors. Every time you pronounce that, it just takes him that much further from God. Just throws him plumb away and the congregations don't want somebody stand up there and use the words of hit, haint, and tote, and carry, and fetch. They don't want that. They want some beautiful something. That's the same thing Cain had on his mind. Their daddy at the beginning offered flowers and fruits of the land when God wanted sacrifice. A man with the revelation of God, it was blood, not a pear or a peach or a plum or whatever it was or apricot. As they say now, it was a blood that brought us out of the Eden, the kind of Eden, a degraded blood, a woman that let the seed of a wrong person be planted into the womb and start it. Now we find to prove the message that is timely, what I'm speaking to you about to prove it. Look about days of hybriding today, trying to make a prettier species. Look at hybriding. Look in the plant life. Here last summer, it was this summer, it was, I had a little old wildflower. He was showing me out there a few minutes ago. It came on my mind, a little wildflower. I had in my bed here. 
I had to water that thing twice a day to keep it alive. It was a hybrid, but it originated from another little yellow flower, which was put together with something else to make this flower. And that little guy stood out there when you could dig 10 feet in the ground and couldn't find even enough moisture to spit. See, it was just living in the dust and it was just as pretty. And it didn't have to be watered. It was original. It wasn't hybrid. There was nothing mixed to that. It was genuine flower. And this was something mixed with it. Have to water it and pet it and baby it. See, this you don't. You didn't. No bugs got onto it. We have to spray it and everything else to keep them. And the flies and nuts and things, them off like that. If you don't, it'll kill them. You don't have a nut wouldn't come near him. Oh, that's a real a genuine born again Christian. You could tempt him with anything you want to. He's still a Christian. Tempt her wherever you want to be. She's still a Christian. A little lady from one of the brothers here, some of your people, the church wrote me a letter the other day, said, Daddy, don't want me to go to a baseball or basketball game, Brother Branham. We believe she said was 12 years old. I said, Brother Branham, we believe you have the word of the Lord in what you tell us now. I said, I kind of think that is wrong, but said, what do you say? I'm going to believe now that's a sweet of a girl, see? So I thought, well, I said, honey, if you're a Christian, you're a Christian anywhere. No matter where you're at, you're still a Christian. But I said, you see, on the basketball floor, what that is thinking about, you hear them quit swearing and carrying on like that. I still believe you'd be a Christian. But you see, Daddy is more advanced in life than you are seeing. Now I said, now you are 12 years old, and you said you had little sister four. Now she wants you to cut paper dolls. Oh, go on. And got no time to cut paper dolls, see? You are further advanced than little sister. Now that's where the church ought to be today. Father advanced in the word of God, not a Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostals, Presbyterian, but advanced in the word to sons and daughters of God. Ah, all right, all right. The message being timely proved by science, by his science and research. You see, they have tried to pervert everything, make a different seed, make a different something, make it prettier. Look at our sisters. I remarked a while ago about how pretty they looked. Oh. You might stand them up out here in a world's contest with some of these glorious fansons or some of these strip teasers and things over here in California, and they'd miss it a million miles. But their name ain't on that book of fame. It's on the book of life. See, uh -huh, a meek and a humble spirit is a great treasure to God. And the Bible said for our women to adorn themselves with a meek and humble spirit subject to your husband and sweetness. And that's what's a great price in the sight of God, see? That's right. Not all this here, that's what they done. They, Max Factor, has beautified women outwardly, which is of Satan. All that stuff is of the devil. Did you know that? Certainly, it's all of the devil. Now, remember, my little wife, when she was pretty and young, she didn't wear makeup, no. She come up. I baptized her in the name of Jesus when she was in little knee dresses like that, she said. But now she's getting old, she said. I'm just getting so wrinkled. I said, you know, as you get older, my eyes get dimmer. I remember you the way you was. And I remember and know in my heart that you're going to be someday. See, with a quiet and a sweet spirit that you have, God will get us together again over yonder. That's that. Then we'll never be changed then. So why? But you see, in the days of Noah, when the sons of God saw the daughters of men were pretty, they taken unto them women for wives. See, the sons of God saw the daughters of man because they were sexy and dressed like that. They lusted for the women and they went for them. See, I'm thankful that you sons of God see beyond that. See, how that women make themselves. See, but what is it? It's all pretty. It's all hybriding. Take some of them, wash their face, 
they are you wouldn't know what you'd have saying and that's right maybe even temper fight a basso and nasty and honorary and filthy and run around with other man i don't care what other my wife i respect loyalty in any woman when i was a little boy i always said if a negro woman wanted to be loyal i would share the last drop of my blood to give her that way see i have respect was right the right thing i've tried to live by that all my life i was young then and i'm old now i'm old i haven't changed my ideas a bit seeing science in the same pattern eve did she also has done to the church pavata over he carried out his plans today through his hybrid church his modern eden that we have today we are living in a scientific eden satan's eden a scientific eden if you want to turn to it in isaiah 14 12 i'll quote it to you if you want to if you want 12 in 14 satan said in his own self i will exalt myself above the most high he would have a kingdom that it would be even the sons of god would worship him and that's just exactly what he done he's done it through church religion like i started in the beginning religion he done it also as a prophet paul seen in second thessalonians the second chapter that he heads in the e the great scientific eden in this day in scientific in education and civilization and has made himself and will finally head up the ecumenical council where all churches will have to bow to him and see what it is it's that spirit of delusion working among the people sons of god which are made in the image of god and daughters of man which is made in the image of man has taken them under falsehood like he did eve and has formed himself through his own gimmicks of science and education and culture till he's got himself in a modern scientific death eden where god by his word spoke and he had an eden without death no science no education like we have today or no civilization you see it now understand it see now he has got his eden look all the churches worship him that put second thessalonians here he said that man who calls himself god sitting in the temple of god and all upon the earth shall bow down and worship him whose names are not written in the lamb's book of life before the foundation of the earth see it's a modern eden now what's he doing himself he is moving himself rome his final great eden place you see where that pope come over here the other day did you notice all them 13s that happened then he spoke 13 words had 13 taken communion spoke in yankee stadium which is 13 everything was 13 and our nation's number is 13 appears in the 13th chapter of revelation 13 stripes 13 stars 13 bars 13 numbers on the coins 13 stars of the coin everything is 13 and a woman here comes the pope the wo- head to the woman the false antichrist with the false bride of science which our world our american eastern world here or western world has led the world in science comes to her in his scientific church and now all protestants is bound to him or see on 13 you see it everything is in a 13 our whole nation everything else is 13 a woman's world see here we are we got it it turned into a woman's world in the Ghana Eden, but it will be god's world someday notice now now also these prophets and things has foretold it and now all again has come like it was never like it was before god moved upon the earth it's become a spiritual care certainly it has notice here notice the second eden typed closely to the first to deceive almost to take the elected notice now that i'm going to compare here just a few minutes now i'm going to have to stop because it's 11 o'clock and so listen these two edens how this eden has tried to type just like satan did at the beginning to eve 
in the real Eden, the first Eden, just watch them type together. Now see, we got it now. Everyone understand clearly a scientific Eden. We're living in sin. Now it wasn't God's Eden. God's Eden doesn't come by science, education, culture. It comes by